Uh, Representative Pettit of the 22nd District, you have the floor, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to the nomination of Justice Andrew McDonald to be the Chief Justice of the Connecticut Supreme Court. I'm opposed for a number of reasons, a number of which you have heard enunciated by fellow representatives. Justice McDonald has never served as a Superior Court nor Appellate Court judge and has a, had a very short career to date in the Supreme Court. As far as I know, he's never represented a criminal defendant and I do not believe he has the experience nor temperament to be the CEO of the judicial branch. I believe all the other current sitting justices have served on both the Superior and Appellate Courts. I am opposed because our Supreme Court justice, justices and especially the Chief Justice should make decisions based on the rule of law. As I read the opinion, admittedly, uh, I think I may be the first non-lawyer standing to speak on the death penalty, it did not strike me as a non-lawyer as a good structural nor particularly legally based analysis that supported the abolition of the death penalty. The opinion seemed to me to be a social argument with attempts to buttress a personal opinion and position and not legal positions. I would then quote, I think people far more experienced than I, Chief Justice Chase Rogers was among the dissenters and wrote, quote, that every step of the majority's opinion was, quote, fundamentally flawed. The majority's determination that the death penalty is unconstitutional under our state's constitution is based on a house of cards falling under the slightest breath of scrutiny. And that's from Justice Rogers' dissenting opinion. Justice Espinoza, Espinoza excuse me, noted in another dissenting opinion, quote, because the majority opinion has grounded its decision on the conclusion, albeit incorrect, that the death penalty no longer comports with evolving standards of decency, the legislature has the power to reenact the death penalty, which you've heard from several other speakers here today. Quote, as the majority recognizes, there is nothing that requires that the standards of de decency evolve only in one direction, end quote. At the time this decision came down, I believe the majority of the people of Connecticut favored the death penalty. My recollection is that at the time, some 60 to 70 percent of people favored it, depending upon how the question was formulated and asked. The more specific the con conditions that were formulated, the more people that were in favor of it and not against. Given what I feel is this bias, I am concerned about confirming a justice who has appeared to want to push a personal agenda and not directly interpret our laws. In addition, I'm concerned that given his age and these issues that he would be a Chief Justice for nearly 20 years. Others here have previously illustrated issues involving religion, especially the Catholic Church, as you heard from our ranking member on judiciary, and another opinion that upset 200 plus years of jurisprudence, as you heard from the representative from the 108th District. I feel that the Supreme Court should interpret our laws and not attempt to impose their personal opinions at will upon the legislature and the people of our state. Finally, in addition, I believe this nominee had previously participated in a politicization of the nomination of Justice Sorella in the past and did not focus on the merits of that prior nomination. Perhaps more troubling, this nomination here, I think, has been totally politicized by many within and outside this body who have used the media robocalls and other methods that have avoided honest discussion of the real issues surrounding this nomination. I cannot, Mr. Speaker, in good conscience support this nomination, and thus, for those reasons, I will be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.